morning, everybody. <laughs> this is a great day to be in Lexington and to be downtown. So I hope you're enjoying some of this yummy Kentucky theater popcorn. If you haven't had any yet, there's plenty around. So grab yourself a, a bin. I'm going to fight anybody that tries to get in this one. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to welcome Councilmember Hannah Legree, who's here with us, Councilmember Whitney Baxter, and Councilmember James Brown. Let's give them a hand. I also want to give a special welcome to Lisa Meek, Lisa Meek, welcome, and Hayward Wilkerson. They are co-chairs of the board of the Friends of the Kentucky. And Friends board members, Max Morris, Celeste Lewis, Bradford Queen, and Anita Courtney are with us. Thank you very much. And a very special welcome, because joining us here today is the woman who founded the Friends, my great friend and mentor and role model, who has done so much for the Kentucky theater, Isabel Yates. <laughs> she also has with her, her partners in this work, Harold Tate, where'd you go, there you are and Bill Fortune, who's joined by his wife, Beverly. Beverly, thank you all so much. So Isabel and the early members of the Friends funded many of the updates to this theater that allow it to continue to operate today. And we thank all of you for all the good work you have done. And of course, I can never forget Mr. Kentucky Theater, Fred Mills. <laughs> it is so great to see you, Fred, back where you belong, right at the Kentucky Theater, right? <laughs> so today, I am officially recommending that the management contract for the Kentucky Theater be awarded to the Friends of the Kentucky Theater. Yes. As the sign back here says, we are looking forward to the reopening of the Kentucky soon. Friends of the Kentucky. And I couldn't agree more. In the bid they submitted to win this contract, the Friends made it very clear that they have some exciting new plans for this theater. And they are keeping the fan favorites in place. One of those would be the popcorn, right, Fred? <laughs> Today marks a new era for Main Street's grand old lady as she prepares to start a year that will mark her second century. Think about that. Yes. The Kentucky Theater opened in October of 1922. She has had a life filled with ups and downs, including a devastating fire in 1987. She benefited from the management of Fred Mills, Annalise Scorsoni, and Howard Stovall for many years. The Kentucky has survived. In fact, she has thrived and she is now a much beloved fixture here on Main Street. As Fred once said in a story in the Herald Leader, our goal is to keep the Kentucky theater going for all time. And to that I say, amen, Fred. Amen. Yeah. Now, let's hear from the friends. Co-chairs Lisa Meek and Hayward Wilkerson Lisa will start us off, and Hayward, if you'll follow Lisa, that would be great. All right, welcome. Thank you very much, Mayor Gordon. 
I cannot properly convey how excited we are about this opportunity. And thank you to you all for coming down and joining us on this lovely morning in the heart of Lexington at the Kentucky Theater. Our board has been thinking about this day for about five years now, and of course, many people have been involved in making it happen. So we wanna say thank you to the city employees we have been working with recently, including Jamshid Baradaran, Chris Ford, Sally Hamilton, Sandra Lopez, Amber Llewellyn, Heather Lyons, Todd Slayton, Sandra Stone, Susan Straub, Amy Wallet, and many others. But if it weren't for the work for so many people over the years, we couldn't be standing here today talking about the theater's really big birthday next year. So thank you, Fred Mills, for always being the most wonderful host and steward of this institution. I've been a frequent patron of this cinema since I was in high school, and it's been a very rare occasion when I've been here and you haven't been working that day. <laughs> you probably get called the Energizer Bunny more than the Energizer Bunny. Your love for this beautiful institution and its patrons is obvious, and we're thrilled that you apparently think retirement is for amateurs, and we're so eager to have you back in here. To Howard Stovall and Annalise Scorsoni, who jumped in to help keep the theater going 30 years ago, Lexington owes you a deep debt of gratitude. I feel like I have traveled the world from within these walls, and I don't know how I would have done it without the theater. Thank you both. Former Vice Mayor Isabel Yates, at then Mayor Jim Gray's request, you set about assembling the Friends of the Kentucky Theater and then you raised almost a million dollars to pay for much needed upgrades, including digital projectors, new sound systems, and so much more. Without these improvements, the theater easily could have folded a decade ago. So you and Bill Fortune served this theater and your community so well. Thank you to you and the founding board members. And lastly, I want to thank the current iteration of the Friends Board, Bradford Queen, Celeste Lewis, John Bosch, who couldn't be here with us today, Max Morris, and our newest board member, Anita Courtney. As I mentioned, we've been working together for the last several years on ideas for the Kentucky Theater 2.0. We're a small but mighty group with each one of you completely committed to ushering the Kentucky into her second century. Hayward, you are one of the smartest people I know with a simultaneous love of history and innovation with the biggest heart, and you're giving Fred a run for his money with your tireless enthusiasm for this theater. Neither of us wanted to take on running this board alone with so much ahead, and I couldn't have asked for a better co-chair these past several years. Thank you. Now I'm crying. <laughs> Hello, sorry, I'm a little blind and the sun's not making this easy, so I'll do my best. And I added some of this late. Thank you, Lisa, thank you, Lisa. I have to say that Lisa has been the yin to my yang throughout these last four years. Her natural optimism has been the tonic for my innate pessimism. <laughs> my impatience to move forward has been tempered by her Olympian standards of perfection. It really is no exaggeration to tell you that we have spent an hour debating the merits of a definitive, of a definite article versus an indefinite article in an email we needed to get to the city at one in the morning. So it, it, I could not have had a better co-chair throughout these last four years as we work towards our goal for the Kentucky Theater. What, what is our goal? As the mayor said, our, our, our goal is to, con to continue the best traditions of the Kentucky Theater 
while introducing innovations and initiatives that will make the theater even more dynamic as it enters its second century. We have a lot of ideas, but I want to tell you just a bit about five of them. One, we will be operating the theater as a nonprofit. The theater has always functioned as a for-profit venture, but we think nonprofit status is essential, and 95% of art houses across the country agree with this because they're all nonprofits. Because of the impact of COVID in particular, fundraising is going to be very, very important. And nonprofit status is essential to fundraising since obviously donations to a nonprofit are tax deductible. And nonprofit status will also allow us to pursue grant funding for new projects and programs. Two, just as soon as we possibly can, we will establish a membership program. A feature at almost every art house we looked at, membership programs offer benefits like discounted tickets and concessions and member only events in exchange for a small annual fee that helps support our work. Three, we will redouble the theater's commitment to search out the best in both first run and repertory film, and we're equally committed to reaching the diverse communities that make up Lexington. Four, with at least seven screening venues in and around downtown Lexington, we think Lexington is ripe for an international film festival. We look forward to providing leadership to make that happen. And we think the theater is the natural hub for an event we are calling the Kentucky Film Festival. Five, now this won't happen this year and it may not happen next year, but we're very excited about adding a small screening room to this downtown film center. Sometimes called micro cinemas, these screening rooms have been used by art houses across the country to increase both the quantity and the diversity of the films they are able to program. We think this is a strategy that would work at the Kentucky. A third small screen would allow us to nearly double the number of films we are able to show, and a third small screen means we can be bolder in programming films aimed at more diverse audiences. Thank you. Good. Now, Mayor, we, we, we have a little, a little gift for you, oh, a little yeah. souvenir of the opening of the theater. Oh. The soon opening, reopen. Oh, thank you so much. I see it's got our logo on there. You, you, you yes, explain. This is the new logo. This, yes, the, this, is, the, this is the new logo. Uh, Lisa and I both work in our day jobs in design and marketing. We realized the Kentucky Theater is obviously TKT, and we thought, That's well, awesome. should put it on a ticket, and then it occurred to us, it looks like a ticket, it's so our tagline says, the Kentucky Theater, your ticket to the best in cinema. All right, <laughs> thank you so much. Of course, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa and Hayward. This is so exciting. Um, can we? Will there be a movie tomorrow? <laughs> We're all ready to go, right? Right. Um, finally, I want to invite to the podium Councilmember Legree, whose district includes our downtown and who is a huge supporter of the Kentucky Theater. Welcome, Councilmember Legree. Thank you so much, Mayor Gordon, and thank you to everyone um, who's here today. I love hearing about the history of the Kentucky Theater and the future um, for, for our wonderful Kentucky Theater. Um, so many Lexington luminaries have brought us here today, and I'm looking forward to what's in store. Um, I'm so excited to share the announcement with you all here today that the Friends of the Kentucky will be the new management group taking over our, our theater. Um, this partnership between longtime advocates of the theater and LFUCG will once again open the doors of our beautiful and historically important building to the public for films, uh, for concerts, for gallery openings, and for private events, which I know that especially after the year we've had, um, or the year and a half we've had, uh, we're all ready for that. Um, the Kentucky is an institution in the, the arts community, not only in downtown Lexington, um, but throughout the Commonwealth. Over the last 99 years, the theater has hosted world premieres, 
celebrity performances, LGBTQ plus events, and countless live shows. I know that many of us here have gone to those events and have celebrated all that the Kentucky holds. Um, I just want to share, and I know this is the message that people have shared before me, that I am so looking forward to this new chapter in the story of the Kentucky Theater. And I wish the theater and everybody here associated with it another 100 years of success or more, as Fred shared, as uh, Lexington's premier historic theater. Thank you all for taking up the next chapter. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Councilmember Legree. And now we have plenty of experts here who can take your questions if you have any. Uh, the question is, is there an opening date? I'll hand that one over. Well, we are hoping, right up here. Ho hoping that perhaps December 1 will be our opening date. We've got a lot of things to get in place before then, and of course we've got COVID numbers. Hopefully they are trending downward now, and we'll be able to stick with that date. So we're not gonna write it in stone just yet, but that's the date we're shooting for. And if everything aligns, then, then we'll be open and have some holiday movies down here for you. No, I don't think we have any cosmetic changes planned, no. She's beautiful as she, she is. is. Yeah. <laughs> She's ready for her uh, close-up. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, well, I mean, for Hayward and me both, <clears throat> and many of our board members, I mean, we have been coming down here since we were kids, you know, maybe sneaking away a little bit sometimes and seeing movies down here for our whole lives. Knowing Fred for, you know, since I was in high school. So it is super exciting to us to be able to switching over and kind of, you know, working. Well, I did work here at one point, but working behind the scenes to just help everything keep going along in fantastic fashion. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that it, it, it's been hard because we've had to keep this slightly secret because yes. that's the nature of you know the contract and unveiling and every single day if I'm at the Y or I'm at the grocery I'm at UK someone says what's the news about the Kentucky theater and Lisa will be the first to say I have a really big mouth so every once in a while I might have maybe said a little <laughs> bit more than I should have to people but holding back our enthusiasm has been really difficult because we know so many people in Lexington are desperate for the theater to reopen. Yes. So yes. I think our excitement yes. is off the scale. Mrs. Yates. Can we make the end be a member and December 1? Yes, that's our goal. Yeah, okay. that's we're, our goal. Yes, and we're going to need all of you all and all of your friends. Please help evangelize for us. We're, we're hoping we can begin to offer memberships even earlier than that, but there's just some technical issues related to software and, and things of that nature. So we would have a variety of different packages. We would have a, you know, an individual membership. We're still debating names. If you look at theaters across the nation, some people are very standard and some people are kind of cutesy about the names, you know, director, producer, we don't know. But we'll be a basic level. Don't quote me, even though I know you're a journalist, but <laughs> it's gonna be around $50 for a basic membership and there'd be a discount for two. We'd certainly offer a senior level membership. Um, family level membership and then on up the scale for people that truly love the theater or for businesses corporate that sponsors. corporate sponsorships things like that that nature we hope to unveil all this very very soon Lexingtonians and we know lots of people who are in the uh, the music industry and so we've got some conversations going there for how to bring music back into the theater and we have availed ourselves of the support from a group called the Art House Convergence. It's a uh, group of all sorts of historic theaters that uh, operate as um, as repertory theaters 
and they are very free with their advice and support because nobody's competing with anybody. You know, one of our best friends in the industry is the Belcourt in Nashville. And so nobody's going to decide on any particular evening, do we go to the Kentucky or are we going to the Belcourt? So they're free with their advice and we have gotten some of the best advice from the Belcourt and other industry professionals that we've met. So we've got uh, we've got, as we've said, we've got great, <laughs> we've got great bones to work with, and we've got some ideas for kind of bringing in a new, more diverse, younger audience, so we can keep the theater going into its next hundred years. So it's not just people here in Lexington that are excited about reopening the theater. Yeah. I mean, we talk to people running art houses all across the country, and people are following our progress very closely. They've been invaluable in providing advice, and they're just as excited in Nashville as we are here to know that we're going to be reopening the theater. Good. Other questions? Oh, I, I, I didn't hear all if of that. From, a, from an economic standpoint, what does this do if it's bustling and lots of people coming? What does it do for the city, for the downtown? And of course, when I used to go here, I ate out before I went to the theater. It will drive economic uh, impact. And um, I think that everything downtown that is bustling and hustling and having lots of people encourages all the rest of the things that are downtown. So it will have a ripple effect. And I think that there's, like Lisa and Hayward both said, there's so many people who are ready for this. They've been asking for years. So it's all good. Oh, this is Fred Mills. Mr. Kentucky. <laughs> Will there be a centenarian level of membership? Well, there should, well, there be, should be. Because my mom's now 101, and she's going to get mad if there I don't. Go. There you go. There you go. Fred can attest. Mrs. Wilkerson is a huge fan of the Kentucky. What other questions? <laughs> Well, we will see you all in December for the movies, right? And the popcorn. Thank you.